Good evening. It is Wednesday, January 18th, 7 p.m., and I'll call to order the Ottawa City Commission meeting. Can I have the roll call, please? <clears throat> Mayor Crowley? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Present. Commissioner Kaler? Present. Commissioner Graves? Present. And Commissioner Clayton? Present. All right, all of us are, are here tonight. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody, whether you're in the audience or listening to us on some form of media. We will start tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by Pastor Tiger Pennington from First Baptist Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Eternal and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, each and every day, and we give you thanks for this good place, for this city and those who gathered here to serve and to express their care uh, for this city and all who dwell therein. God, grant wisdom in this meeting, grant compassion, grant the spirit of shalom, which is well-being, human flourishing for all who find themselves in this very good place. We give you thanks for the willingness to step out and lead and to serve for those uh, in this place. And we just ask that there be compassion and goodness in every decision made through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. That'll move us on to our consent agenda, which consists of our minutes from our December 7th regular meeting, <coughs> our December 19th study <coughs> session, and our December 21st regular meeting, along with our agenda approval. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved. That'll move us on to our regular agenda. Item 8 is public comments. Do we have any this evening? None registered. Thank you. Item 9 is our declaration. At this time, I'd like to give the commissioners a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially. Great. Hearing none, we'll move on to item 10. Presentation of retirement plaque to former city commissioner Tom Wygan. Well, as I, as I talked to Tom on the way in, I mentioned to him that it was finally great that we could get him out of vac vacation for the last couple years and get him into, in here to accept this uh, plaque. So, Tom, please come on up. I'll stand, I'll stand close to so we yeah. can. Alright, one, two, three. Perfect. Alright. Right. Can you say some stuff, Tom? Uh, the floor's all here. Richard's saying you have up to 20 minutes. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Only 20? Yeah. You know, um, I did prepare a few, a few notes I can't leave, and if you guys have been around me long enough, you know I've put a microphone available to me, and it might take some time. But, um, Tom, you're on mute. Richard was telling me. <laughs> oh. I couldn't help it one last time. <laughs> Richard was saying before the meeting that, that soon after I retired, as a lady would come into his office and want to see Commissioner Wigand, and uh, he'd say, well, you know, commissioner, he's not a commissioner anymore. He's retired. He's left. He's not here. And the next day she'd come in and say, well, I, want to, I want to see Commissioner Wigand. And he says, you know, he's retired. He's, he's not here. He can't, he, you know, he's not a commissioner. She did that for several days. Finally, asked, uh, "Why is she doing it?" And she says, "Yeah, I, I, I know, but I just love hearing that he's not a commissioner anymore." <laughs> 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 well, and I, when I, uh, when I get a chance to uh, um, talk a little bit in public, I, I think of uh, uh, what I, I think Lou Holtz. Uh, former uh, Notre Dame uh, football coach and uh, motivational speaker said about public speaking it's not a big it's not a big deal just stand up and start talking until you think of something to say <laughs> and so tonight I uh, <coughs> I do have uh, some things to say uh, I, 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 I want to tell you that I en enjoyed uh, being a commissioner I thought it was uh, interesting challenging um, a good public service and you guys uh, all did a great job and do a great job and I do hope that I did contribute 
a little bit to the betterment uh, of Ottawa and as all of you do it at each meeting. Commissioners have a difficult and important role in uh, protecting the public trust and uh, advancing the business of the city and its quality of life, as you all realize. Uh, Commissioner Kaler and I are uh, Rotarians. Yep. And Rotary has a four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Uh, and the four-way test is what you guys use oh. on virtually every decision uh, that I feel like you do. Uh, it consists of, uh, number one, is it the truth? If what you're dealing with are facts. Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Is it, is, have you considered everyone in your decisions? And I think, I think you do. And then we'll build goodwill and better friendships. Um, that's a challenging one because sometimes it doesn't make everyone happy, but it does, uh, with the transparency as much as possible, it does build uh, goodwill and better friendships. <laughs> and then the fourth is it beneficial to all concerned. And I, and I think those, you, the commission does a good job of taking all of those into consideration. Uh, and I, I got to say, uh, from my experience, the city is in good hands because they do use that kind of reasoning when they're confronted with a, uh, an issue or a problem or a spending issue or, or what, what do we do now, coach? Um, people have asked why I retired from the commission. Uh, over the years, and I don't want to really disclose how many years it's been, but I've been active in a lot of, uh, and served on a lot of boards and a lot of committees. And often uh, as the chairperson or president of those. Uh, and on every one of those, I, c I felt like I had something con to contribute, a positive influence or in a position to make a difference. And I feel, I, I felt that I was coming to where I wasn't as engaged as I should be, as I wanted to be. Uh, and so I think it was the right thing uh, to disengage and retire and let someone much younger and uh, more apt to have the future in mind uh, th than I did. Um, and I didn't want to just fill a spot until my, my term was over. And, I, and so that's kind of where I made the decision. Again, I want to, I want to quote uh, Lou Holtz. Uh, when he was looking at hiring a person, and this was kind of <coughs> came in to um, uh, make sense for what I, what I did, uh, he said when he's looking at hiring a person, and, and the city does hire us when we're elected, uh, he, he looks at it and he says if he has golf bags, if he has golf clubs in his truck or a camper in his driveway, he's not going to hire him. And I have both. <laughs> and so I wouldn't expect <laughs> to be hired with, with, with those things in mind. And, and those, are, those are, are important to me at, my, uh, at this time of my life. And the Bible says there's a reason for everything. Uh, there's a time to engage and a time to disengage. And I, th I think I picked the time uh, correctly. Uh, and it's a time for others to step in. Uh, and I think my retirement has done at least two things for this commission. It, it's, uh, I think it's lowered the average age of the commission by about 20 years. <laughs> and it's possibly raised the IQ of the commission about 20 points. <laughs> so I hope you understand that. And Zach, uh, from what I see uh, in here, uh, you're doing a great job. And I thank you, and I think the city thanks you for stepping up and doing that. Uh, I thought I, uh, uh, one of my daughters babysat you or your sister, Emily, probably, possibly Emily. Is she older than you? She is. Anyway, uh, I asked them, and, and she, she, they did sit, Emily, but she, you were just a baby, or when, when you were a baby, your mother took over babysitting or something, yes. I guess. <laughs> but anyway, it gives you a little perspective on time. Uh, anyway, good job. Um, I, I got to say I've retired from the commission, but not from my work life. I still take phone calls and answer some of them. Uh, I uh, promised my broker I'll practice another 20 years, and then full retirement will overtake me then. And Richard, I want to talk ab about you a little bit. Uh, I understand you're going to be retiring also in a couple months. 
And I want to tell you publicly that in my opinion, you've done a good job uh, for the commission and, and for the city. Um, you've grown and hired, I think, the most professional staff Ottawa's ever had. Uh, you've had a great and long career to look back upon, and I can't wait until your book reviewing some of the experiences you've had comes out. Is he going to write a book? <laughs> <laughs> Since the day we met, when I gave you a tour of our city, uh, you've been an important person in my life. Uh, you supported uh, me and my work at the chamber. You poked fun at me. Sometimes really, really hurt. <laughs> anyway, you're always someone I could discuss any issue with. You're the first to come to be with me when my wife passed. I will never, never forget that. It is my hope we see more of each other on the golf course in coming years. Thank you for your friendship and your service to this community. Uh, so I close with this. Uh, thanks for the recognition. Any opportunity to, to address you tonight. I love you guys. I love the city. Carry on and thanks again to all of you. Appreciate it. Tom, thank you. Um, I've sat up here for six years and a couple of those were with you and certainly um, I, I don't think, our, I know our age has, has certainly went down, but I don't know if our IQ has went up, quite honestly. I, I learned a lot from you as long as, you know, as uh, with the others, uh, but uh, you were always a pleasure to talk to uh, and certainly hopefully continue to talk to as we did just the other day, poke fun at some, some you know, things going on around town. But uh, it's, it was always great to see you and have conversations with you and uh, certainly can't wait to have more. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, uh, that'll move us on to item 11. Proclamation recognizing January 2023 as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Human Trafficking Awareness Month focuses attention on victims of human trafficking, a form of modern day slavery and its far reaching effects. Adrian Nunez and Cin Cindy Wallace from the Willow Domestic Violence Center will accept the proclamation and it will be read by Commissioner Clayton. Whereas, Human trafficking, a modern form of slavery, is one of the largest and fastest growing criminal industries in the world. It is based on recruiting, harboring, and transporting people for the purpose of exploitation. And, whereas, millions of men, women, and children around the globe, including here in Ottawa, Kansas, are subject to modern day slavery, the cruel, inhumane practice of human trafficking, and, whereas, sex trafficking and labor trafficking occur in Kansas and both adults and children of any gender, socioeconomic status, age, race, sexual orientation, or geographic location can become victimized. And whereas human trafficking includes sexual, verbal, emotional, and physical abuse and exploitation and all forms of abuse carry long-term complex trauma implications. And whereas Kansas human trafficking laws define commercial exploitation of children which does not require a showing of force, fraud, threat, or coercion and references the existing statutory definition of human trafficking and aggravated human trafficking. And whereas the effect of human trafficking reach far beyond its victims and perpetrators, causing disruptions in our schools, places of work, and neighborhoods. And now, therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, does hereby proclaim the month of January 2023 as Human Trafficking Awareness Month and urges all citizens to speak out against sex and labor trafficking and exploitation, to support survivors of these heinous crimes, to encourage community leaders to hold offenders accountable, and to make preventable efforts to a priority <coughs> by hosting events, by creating policies at work school and home and by supporting and participating in programs designed to reduce and eventually eliminate human trafficking as a societal problem. Signed this 18th day of January 2023 by our mayor Eric Crowley. Thank you. I believe we were going to have 
either Adrian or Cindy on Zoom, but I don't believe they're available. So we will make sure that we get them this proclamation. That'll move us on to item 12. Proclamation recognizing January 29, 29th, 2023 is Kansas Day. January 29th, 2023 marks the 162nd anniversary of Kansas becoming a state. And I believe, uh, sorry, the proclamation will be read by um, Commissioner Graves and Rita Neinstedt will actually accept it. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas January 29th, 2023 marks the 162nd anniversary of the state of Kansas becoming a state, and whereas the land that would become Kansas came to be part of the United States with the acquisition of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, and whereas Kansas entered the United States as a free state during the presidency of Abraham Lincoln in 1861, and whereas the state seal contains the motto ad astra per aspra, a Latin phrase which means to the stars through difficulties. This motto adopted in 1861 refers not only to the pioneering spirit of the early settlers, but also to the difficult times Kansas went through before becoming a state. John James Ingalls, a powerful voice in early Kansas history, suggested the motto as an expression of the aspiration of Kansas to reach the unattainable. Its dream is the realization of the impossible. Now, therefore, the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas, does hereby recognize January 29, 2023 as Kansas Day and reminds all citizens to celebrate the rich and powerful heritage of Kansas, a land of determination and strength. Signed this 18th day of January, 2023, by our mayor, Eric Crowley. Thank you. Well, thank you first for doing this proclamation honoring Kansas Day. When I was a young girl, Kansas Day was a big occasion. I know there are schools that still do activities around Kansas Day, and I'm happy for that. And I hope that all of you will recognize Kansas Day on January 29th and do something with your family. I am sure most of you have heard or even visited ghost towns in Kansas. The first item I am going to share is how one town won over becoming a ghost town. Now you have seen rivers and creeks named after animals and birds. Where I grew up, there was Elk River and Turkey Creek. What about Grasshopper River or the town named Grasshopper Falls? Now that was not one of my favorite things to encounter in the yard, garden, or fields as I was growing up. In February 1854, so before Kansas became a state, Henry Zinn settled near what was named Grasshopper River. On Christmas Day, 1854, four men staked out a settlement that would become Grasshopper Falls. Now, what city business is, is done on Christmas Day? Not generally much. But 100 maps, oh, wait, back up. Uh, the following spring, the spring of 1855, Isaac Cody, Buffalo Bill Cody's father, surveyed that site known as Grasshopper Falls. 100 maps were sent back east to advertise the town. Now that's a little different than the way you advertise our town. Grasshopper fall fell victim to fires and multiple grasshopper plagues in 1855, 1860, 1861, and the worst in 1874. Being tired of the recurring plagues, people asked Kansas legislature to name, to change the name of their town and river. Now I'm not sure if the change really helped reduce the number of grasshoppers. But the river became known as Delaware River 
and the town is now known as Valley Falls. Wakanda Springs is located near Beloit and Cocker City, which is known to have one of the largest balls of twine. Wakanda Springs is possibly the only saltwater springs in the world. The limestone walls that rose about, oh, the limestone walls rose into a formation much like the crater of a volcano. The limestone walls rose about 200 feet and formed a perfect circle. The salt and other minerals that built that wall were found to have certain healing properties. Zebulon Pike was the first man that recorded a visit to the area. But a settlement of the area didn't happen until 1861. A man named Pfeiffer was the first settler to take out a claim. And a few years later, the, a man named Burnham constructed a bottling plant and began to sell the mineral water as a health tonic. This may have been the first bottled water in Kansas. The proper name for the bottled water was Wakanda Flyer, which was sold in all parts of the country and won a gold medal at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. A hotel and health spa offered physical therapy and diet programs. But the Bureau of Reclamation was concerned about flooding in the area there were many people for and against the plan for damming that river. But eventually the sanitarium, hotel, and all the buildings around the area of, of Wakanda Springs were bulldozed in, into the spring, and is now under Glen Elder Dam. Now, Kansas is known as the Sunflower State. What I had never heard was how it became official. It is a common prairie flower, but when a bill was first introduced, there was much opposition to it. State Representative Frank Martin opposed it, saying, the weed is in many respects worse than a cuckleburr. Now, I don't believe that. Cuckleburrs are horrible. In fact, 10 years earlier, there had been a bill to declare the sunflower a noxious weed that needed to be eradicated. However, Senator Morehouse drafted the bill in 1903 and it was signed into law on March 12, 1903. He stated this flower has to all Kansans a historic symbolism which speaks of frontier days, winding trails and pathless prairies and is full of glory of the past and pride of the present and rich, richly emblemic, emblematic of the golden future. So those are just three little tidbits that I wanted to share with you tonight about Kansas. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. That will move us on to item 13. Request for approval of 2023 funding agreement with Franklin County Development Council. This agreement is for services in 2023, and I believe if we have any questions, Director Landis can answer those questions for us, Commissioners. So are there any comments or questions about our agreement with uh, Franklin County Development Council? If not, how would you like to proceed? And Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion. We approve item 13 on our agenda. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can I roll call vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Clayton? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. That'll move us on to item 14. Request for approval of 2023 funding agreement with Prairie Paws Animal Shelter. Once again, this is, for, this is an agreement that we have for services in 2023. I believe uh, Vanessa is here. If uh, any of the commissioners have any questions or comments for her, If did not, we have some questions that we were looking to clarify or did we do we want to ask those or did we get some clarification via email or something 
Does anybody have any questions otherwise? No. <laughs> I did not. Please. I, I believe Vanessa will be at Monday's meeting to talk to you about some of those issues. <clears throat> I know some of the concern we had the other day uh, might have affected whether we were going to uh, make the agreement with Prairie Falls. Um, does that, does that, is that concern uh, any more? Okay. I would think we could work out any differences after the fact, and I, I certainly am one to say that I don't want the city to take over this Prairie Falls. Uh, there are a lot of reasons, financial reasons as well as as running it, because uh, I believe Vanessa's done a good job. And, and I didn't ask this on the last one, but just for clarification purposes on this one, Director Landis, uh, Prairie Falls isn't asking for any more than what they asked for last year, correct? They received an increase. increase. Please. They received an increase. Did they? Mm -hmm. I can tell you. We'll get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can pull it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vanessa, do you know? I think it's the same. I didn't. No. There was a small increase. Yes, well, there's, there's an increase. Okay. okay. So there is an increase, but yes. it's incremental? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for the public's sake, I wanted them to know that. Any other questions or comments? How would we like to act on item 14? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve item number 14. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote? Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Clayton? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, item 15. Request for approval of 2023 funding agreement with Elizabeth Layton Center. Commissioners, uh, Leslie, do we have anybody on Zoom? Okay. Um, if we have any, this is an agreement for services in 2023 with the Elizabeth Layton Center. Uh, do we have any questions that uh, Director Landis may be able to answer for us? If not, how would you like to act on item 15? Mr. Mayor, yes, I'll make a motion that we approve item 15. Thank you. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Clayton? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? And I vote yes. Motion is approved. Item 16. Request for approval of 2023 funding agreement with Ottawa Main Street Association. This is an agreement we have for services in 2023 with Ottawa Main Street Association, and I believe Olivia is here tonight if anybody has any questions for her or Commissioner Graves, if they would like. If not, how would you like to act? If there are no questions, I would move that we approve the funding agreement as listed in item 16. Thank you. I'll, I'll second. second. We have a bunch of seconds. You're <laughs> doing a good job, obviously. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can I have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Clayton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Graves? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. Thank you. Item 17. Request for approval of ordinance or revise, revising Article 7 in the Municipal Code on Cemeteries. Following a number of public meetings, changes to how memorial decorations are handled is recommended. Director Tharp, good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, I know at this point you probably feel like we have uh, maybe belabored this discussion a little bit. Uh, as was stated earlier, we have had a number of public meetings. Uh, we have talked to a number of people. Uh, we have had a lot of internal meetings as to how we uh, uh, proceed forward as, as to how we manage the, the cemeteries. Uh, we have drugged this on on purpose. Uh, we wanted to get as much information out there, as many people as we could touch in, in some of the things that we do. Uh, I am not going to belabor that this evening. Uh, I, I believe that, uh, that we are on a good path at this point uh, with the cemeteries, and uh, we will continue on that path as we move forward. Our uh, ask tonight is uh, approval of some changes in the resolution. As I've stated before, we all know there's got to be some rules that, uh, that help us manage what, what we do with the cemeteries. At the same point in time, uh, uh, there will be a, a, a good deal of flexibility in how we deal with uh, the, 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 the citizens that, uh, that, are, that have loved ones in the cemetery. With that, I would stand for questions. 
Commissioners, any questions for Director Tharp? How would you like to act on item 17? Well, I do appreciate, uh, Dennis, the work you've done on this and the other people working with you on this. And I agree that there's sometimes some gray areas that need to be handled with some discretion. And I appreciate the fact that we're doing that now. So I'll make the motion we approve item 17 on our agenda. Thank you. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'd just like to make the comment that you know, we're, along with what Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore said, you guys have done a lot of work on this and a lot of conversations have been had. But the, the conversations, just because this ordinance is, whether it's approved or not, doesn't stop tonight if needed be. You know, the, if there's a concern from a citizen, they can <coughs> certainly reach out and, and uh, you know, have a conversation with you about that. That is absolutely correct, Commissioner. And I hope all of our citizens understand that, uh, that that's what we're here for. Right. You know, we, we work for the community and we do our best to uh, accommodate the things that that uh, you know uh, i'm going to say common mm -hmm. sense rules you know uh, a lot of times you know regulations get black and white and we don't look beyond them well we're not that's not going to happen we we'll have those good conversations thank you any other discussion can i have a roll call vote please how do you vote commissioner kaler yes commissioner clayton Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. Thank, Thank you, you, Director Tharp. That'll move us on to item 18. Request for approval of wastewater rate resolution. This resolution outlines recommended changes to the wastewater rates. Good evening, Director Landis. Good evening. And thank you. I will let you know up front for both of the next two items that the resolutions were included in the packet. Typically, we wouldn't include new documents in a regular meeting agenda packet, but these were only slight changes made, in, mo made um, mostly formatting changes, added the years to the tables, things like that. But nothing has changed majorly since you first saw them at a previous study session. So I want to just make sure that you knew that that was the reason that they were in the packet. Um, there's only some slight changes there. Mm -hmm. So the first item is your wastewater rate resolution. We've had conversations about this utility and the need to increase rates um, for the, this is a proposed five year increase um, for each of the five years. And the base charge increase proposed is $1 in 2023 and $2 for the remaining years through 2027 and in at a 5% increase over each year between 2023 and 2027. Uh, we are in 2023 and since we are um, um, have uh, initially we had um, discussed increasing rates by the February 1st billing or the, the February billing, but because this is now the top of the year, we're, we're thinking that that'll go into place in March. And we have prepared the resolutions to show that that would be a March increase every year thereafter so that it will be easy to keep track of and or be able to relay that information to our customers. <coughs> and I'm available for any questions you might have. Director Landis. Um, I I have questions about, and I don't know that it necessarily needs to be in the resolution, but um, in the years that I've been on the city commission, it seems as though um, we don't have the conversation often enough. It's not a comfortable conversation to talk about utilities. Um, certainly nobody wants to talk about um, raising utilities. We all here pay utilities too. Um, and uh, it's certainly not comfortable. And so I think for that reason, I think we oftentimes um, kind of kick kick the can down the road. Um, but we have had lots of conversations um, when these presentations have been brought to us in the last couple months about the necessity to continue the conversation and not continue it to the point in which we're in a, um, when we're up against a deadline or we're up against um, where we're not going to make budget. Um, and so, uh, we've had the conversation about having a yearly converse or putting this on the agenda every single year it's not in the resolution but are there thoughts about how we can make sure we actually do that moving forward i won't be here forever none of us are going to be here forever but certainly something for good practice 
Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think we've talked about just making sure that we've had the rate conversation by, you know, the first part of the fall every year for the upcoming next year. But I think there's actually two opportunities through the year to be able to look at these because you have your budget um, process by which you're looking at a forecast or at least a budget presentation and now that we've developed a five-year forecast and it's it's a really solid outlook and that's what we're going to be updating when we're putting those budgets together that's yet another opportunity to take a look at it early in the year and then to review it in another six months and then have it kind of ready to go if there were any changes that needed to be made to what's proposed here because while this is a rate resolution for five years if there is a, a need to do something different, that would be the time to do it um, in advance of when this is um, scheduled to be done each year. So is it is it appropriate for us just to, to, I mean, I'm not even sure it's appropriate to put language within the resolution that says that we will review it every year. I don't, I guess I'm looking for some guidance on how it is that we can make sure that we actually honestly force actually the conversation every single year yeah. commissioners you have tried various means through the years to include this in resolutions and um, when we had an update ordinance um, the fact of the matter is you can't require a future commission to engage in discussion on an item legally um, what you can do is ask staff to calendar this for a certain month out of the year um, and perhaps you do that as part of the budget process and say that, you know, we'll do CIP in March or April and we want to do utility rate conversation around that time and just, you know, make sure that staff knows that you want that on the calendar. Um, and I think if there's strong consensus directing staff to do that, we'll make sure that it gets on the calendar and kind of build it in and institutionalize that conversation every year so it happens as part of the, the full fiscal picture of the city. And I would ask Director Landis, I mean, you're kind of the quarterback of the budget process. Is there a time that you see that fitting in best in terms of the conversation? Yeah, I certainly think that each time we go to look at the proposed budget for the upcoming year is a great time to look and see what that, you know, what that five-year forecast looks like and if it's really varying from what we had planned for it to happen. And then again, make sure that we're doing it in the fall uh, ahead of. I don't know if there's a way to do anything other than just making sure that everyone knows that that's the expectation. And certainly, I know that Director Tharp and I have heard you and your concerns, and we certainly wanna see that carry forward, but your concern is valid, and that we wanna make sure that everybody you know, after us is, is doing the same thing. Well, I'm certainly in favor of having that conversation every year. As, mm -hmm. as Blaine mentioned, we can't force a future commission to have that conversation, but what we could do is force a future commission to have a significant raise if we don't have these conversations every year. So we don't want to do that either. So I, I certainly think that a, a March time, you know, if we could put that on the calendar would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any other comments? Do we think that's a good good time to have that conversation? Okay. Spring. Maybe we just say spring. Spring. <laughs> spring is spring. Let's go spring. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we have any comments or questions for Director Landis about item 18? How would you like to act, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move that we approve item 18 as listed in the agenda. Thank you. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I'd like to add to that just to appreciate all the work that the staff's done on this. And you've done brought a lot of different proposals to us, a lot of research, a lot of time spent on this. And we've been thinking about it for a long time. And I do like the increase. It's not the top end we were looking at. It's not the bottom end. It's pretty much right in the middle. And it's not that. It's a, it's a modest increase. And uh, I know people on fixed incomes, uh, like yours truly now, uh, we always appreciate the concern that the commission has on not being too excessive. But yet we do need to build up our cash basis, and I totally understand that over the few, few years. And so I, I, I appreciate all that work, and I, I think I like this proposal. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll just echo what Commissioner Skidmore said. And he mentioned previously in a study session, having traveled, and been to countries where they do not have 
the indoor plumbing facilities that we are blessed to have. Um, and while it is an increase, I try to look at it from the standpoint of how blessed I am to every day. When I use wastewater, I never have to think about it again. Um, and so I try to view it that, that the increase is not great, but it's incremental. Um, but the benefit of having indoor plumbing is far outweighs to me any increase that yeah, it'll do something to you when you have to step over an open sewer to go to a restaurant to eat. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of do something to you, but I appreciate we're buried sewer lines here. You bet. Good point. Appreciate that. Any other comments? Go ahead and roll call vote, please. How do you vote, Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Clayton? <coughs> yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. That'll move us on to item 19. Request for approval of water rate resolution. The resolution outlines recommended changes to the water rates. Director Landis. Thank you. Um, same conversation. We've had this same um, discussion uh, at a couple of different study sessions and before now, and then also a review of the resolution brought to you. Again, this resolution has some slight changes, um, nothing major in it from the first time you saw it. The um, base charge increase for um, that's being proposed in here is that for each of the next three years 23 24 and 25 that there would be an increase of $2 um, each year now in the first year um, we those were varying rates and so a, a couple of them are uh, plus or minus um, a little bit to come up to that that um, initial amount for that base charge um, and rounded to the 50 cents so it's easiest to be able to explain to customers what those are and what we're expecting them to be in the future and then also a an increased rate that at a declining structure over the next five years so in 2023 a 10% increase in 2024 an 8% increase 2025 is 6% in 26 and 27 are four percent and this was based on our conversation about the declining fund balance and um, it is at a significant rate over the next several years um, against the capital improvements that need to be done over the next five years for this um, utility and while the previous one had had a more recent rate increase the last rate increase for the water utility was in 2018 so also we're available for any questions you might have Commissioners, any questions for Director Landis? I would just um, circle back around to the conversation that we had about the, wa uh, the wastewater um, rates. Um, I do believe that this, too, needs to be a conversation that we have on an annual basis. I would certainly agree with that also. Commissioners, any other questions or comments? Well, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve item 19 on our agenda. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a roll call vote, please. How do you vote, Commissioner Craves? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Clayton? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. Thank you, Director Landis. Thank you. That will move us on to item 20. Comments by Mayor <laughs> Eric Crowley and plaque presentation. Well, I'm not really sure who the does the plaque presentation with that be Mayor Pro Tem? I've got it right here. All right. Um, I guess I can start off if you'd like with my comments. That's fine. Comments um, that unless way. you don't want to stand up there that long. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I may not give it to you. Okay. you know, we'll see. Um, I don't think I'll say anything as elegant as uh, uh, our former mayor, Tom Wygon, said. Um, I certainly want to say thank you to the commission for uh, certainly putting me in this position. Uh, it was a wild ride for sure. Uh, being my first time, there's a lot of things that you're not prepared for. Uh, a lot of conversations you're certainly not prefer prepared for, uh, but I enjoyed it. I certainly did. Uh, I hope that I, I made uh, the commission proud for the decision that they made um, and the public proud certainly for how I acted and how I uh, uh, campaigned for the city of Ottawa. It's, uh, as I say every time, and I said, uh, when, when I came in for the interview to uh, fill a position six years ago. I love Ottawa. It's a, it's a wonderful town. Uh, I have no intentions of leaving, um, um, and my kids are upset about that. 
but uh, um, you know they they got their choice they can do what they want when they get old enough so um, wonderful uh, wonderful time I had uh, um, I uh, look forward to to certainly next year a uh, lot of stuff has been accomplished um, we have a lot more businesses in town certainly a lot more houses in, in town um, uh, it's easy as I say to to do the job setting here because of you know folks like Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore and, and uh, former Mayor Kaler and certainly former Mayor Wygon uh, it's easy to do this job when you ride coattails like that for sure uh, and and you know uh, other folks that have been here before us before me so I uh, want to say thank you again and thank you to the public and uh, we'll, we'll see how next year goes so thank you good. very good comments mr. mayor and I, I will say too that uh, having served as mayor before one term I don't remember which one it was but my wife was having dinner with one of her friends and and she casually mentioned I was mayor that year and this friend said oh I didn't know Otto even had a mayor and so it tells me that there's a population out there that doesn't realize they think this city runs all by itself. Just turn it on autopilot and it takes off. And it doesn't. And we very well all know that now having served up here. And so I do want to say that uh, Mr. Crowley's done an excellent job as our mayor. As the plaque says, in appreciation to Eric Crowley for his service as mayor, January 2022 to January 2023. Thank you. All right, that'll move us on to item 21. City Commission Reorganization, nominations for mayor, 2023 to 2024 term. Mr. Berry, I will make the motion that you repeat as a uh, second uh, term as mayor. You've done an excellent job, as I said earlier, and I have no issue with the, with making the motion to, to, to say that would you serve as our mayor for the next year. Thank you. Is there a second? I will second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have a couple comments I would like to make, if I could, real quick. Um, I would first like to say that I have the utmost respect for our mayor and pro tem, uh, so I don't want any questions or comments to be taken as otherwise. Um, I will definitely be voting as yes to keep you as mayor. Um, I would also like to apologize for the delay in my question. Um, our initial discussion on the 9th, um, I process thoughts uh, apparently slowly and so <laughs> so here we are um, I've served on the Commission for a total of uh, approximately four years that's less time than pretty much everybody but Zach um, so you may have to correct me later but while serving on the Commission I have noticed that we've rotated through mayor and pro tem positions every year each time it was a different person serving to where uh, no one served as mayor back to back I am uh, opposed to doing things just because that is the way we've always done things however i do feel like rotating leadership does serve our community the best since we are breaking what i believe is good precedent i think for the benefit of our community since really um the uh, our meeting was before our regular meeting um, i would like to ask uh, what our benefit to the community would be for keeping um, mayor the same for an additional year and probably, I would probably direct that yeah. to Mr. Skidmore just because yeah. that that was the. And I appreciate that question. And I know that typically, yeah, we would move up, and it has happened with, with we, uh, Commissioner Kaler did serve as I think a year and a half, maybe a year and three fourths, if I remember right. I don't remember what the exact how long that was. But having been uh, newly retired, my wife and we do plan to travel some here this year while we still have our health and we still have some money in the bank and so we were going to be gone some this year probably more than we would normally and uh, places where we go internet is a little bit choppy and uh, be, may, it could be difficult to conduct meeting as mayor so that was the one reason there for, for um, myself uh, thinking that this would be good just to have Mayor Crowley continue on as our, our mayor and I totally respect how the vote will go thank you Any other comments or questions? Can I have a roll call vote, please? Sorry, can I make one before yes, you do? please, absolutely. Um, for historical stuff, I, I will say being new on the commission, um, and it's remiss, it's on me, for sure. I wish 
the process had been explained uh, better prior to last Monday's study session. Because I was kind of um, similar to Commissioner Graves. Um, I assumed that there was a process in place. Um, I always thought it was pro tem moved up and then a new pro tem took over. Um, so that's totally on me for not asking that or finding that out beforehand. Um, but so that was just something that the communication kind of around <coughs> that changing of the guard, for lack of a better term, um, was confusing, I would say. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, I had comments that I was actually going to give during my um, commission report, but I think it's appropriate to give those now. Um, you know, I appreciate um, tonight begins my 13th term as a city commissioner, and um, I, I think that's the most out of all these uh, in individuals sitting here. Um, and sitting here for 13 years, um, I so appreciate the process in which the, the voters approved years ago that um, there would be a turnover in the governing body every single year. Voters approved for that to happen. This is an opportunity for us to refresh the office of mayor, the office of mayor pro tem every single year. Individuals may not know, but in the state of Kansas, there are other forms of government in which they do not do this. They do not reelect, or they do not elect a mayor and a mayor pro tem every single year. It just doesn't happen everywhere. Um, but um, as a commissioner who did serve, yes, nearly two years, um, I got to tell you, it's, it's, I don't, and I didn't recommend it in the study session. I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I am kindly going to request that we um, review, and not just review, but actually have a deep discussion about how reorganization happens, how mayor is selected, how mayor pro tem is selected on an upcoming agenda. And not an upcoming agenda like before the end of the year. I'm talking an upcoming agenda in the next few months. And I think we need to look at changes and really talk about the process. I am sorry that you didn't understand that process because I got to tell you, I, 12 years ago, I didn't understand it either. I had no idea. And um, parts of it I still don't understand. And I'm sorry about that. And I think that there could be some clarification that could happen. So um, I'm requesting that that be put on the agenda. Any other questions or comments? Can we have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Clayton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. Um, is, sorry. Number 22. Yes, yeah, sorry. May Item 22. <laughs> Mayor's oath of office. Do you want to stand and raise your right hand? Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Eric Crowley. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And faithfully discharge the duties of mayor. And faithfully discharge the duties of mayor. Of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, so help me God. Of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, so help me God. Thank you. It, it's item 23 is a comments by our, our newly appointed mayor, but quite honestly, I think I made some mm -hmm. comments that I would just be repeating in item um, 20 that I made. So I think we'll just move on to item uh, 24. Commission reorganization nominations for mayor pro tem 2023 to 2024 term. Uh, I would make the motion that we approve mayor pro tem Skidmore to maintain his position as mayor pro tem. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I would, I guess, bring the discussion point of, um, as Commissioner Graves mentioned, she served several years previously. I obviously know I'm new and I'm learning a whole lot. Um, and as Commissioner Skidmore has said, with traveling and potentially being gone, um, we just bring up the option of um, Commissioner Graves for pro tem. I don't know if. 
I need to wait till after this motion, obviously, parliamentary procedure stuff, but um, would like to bring that up for discussion, um, considering just the potential for travel, as Commissioner Skidmore had said for himself, and um, kind of bringing in, like we said, some new, new blood. Any other discussion, comments? Can we have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote? Commissioner Clayton? No. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yes. And Mayor Crowley? I vote yes. Motion is approved. That'll move us on to item 25. Mayor Pro Tem's oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I am Mike Skidmore. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And faithfully discharge the duties of Mayor Pro Tem. And faithfully discharge the duties of Mayor Pro Tem. Of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, so help city, me God. The City of Ottawa, Kansas, so help me God. Yeah. <laughs> Item 26. Comments by the newly appointed Mayor Pro Tem. Well, it's hard to follow with the mayor what he's already said, so, but let me just add a couple things on there. Uh, I, I think a couple things we're doing right, and I want to keep those going as well, is the Neighborhood Revitalization Program. I talked to uh, Commissioner uh, Waymeyer th this morning and uh, appreciated the county support, along with the school district, of course, because it takes all three of us. But we were just talking about all the projects that have taken place this year. Now that we've expanded the territory, we should be able to see even more. And so I appreciate the fact that he's aggressive on that, along with many of his peers, and I certainly am as well, to keep that going, Neighborhood Revitalization Program. And of course, continue working with our bike trails and ha bringing events. I think with our, our chamber and with what Paul's doing, economic development, uh, I, th I just see great things happening this year. This should be the big year for maybe landing a, a tenant on our proximity park. We say that every year and it uh, hadn't happened, but I get more and more confident each year that something's going to happen this year. So thank you to those two men for what they do for our community as well. Thank you. Thank you. That'll move us on to item 27. Comments by the city manager. <coughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'd like to do is thank former Commissioner Wygan for being here and for his kind remarks. I greatly appreciate that. It's probably the first time I've had a Chamber of Commerce director speak so kindly of me. So thank you. <laughs> um, Rita, is there anything you'd like to add, like maybe the uh, how you knew the people that came across in a covered wagon true story but would you like a few more seconds you're sure <laughs> right thank you thank you for coming and sharing that um, Kansas Day is important to my wife we have a Christmas tree that's not packed away that's a Kansas Day tree there you go um, and to the Commission um, thank you for having hard discussions Thank you for reorganizing, and um, my pledge to you, as long as I am here, is that my staff and I will continue serving you and the citizens of this community to the best of our ability. Thank you. This is what sets a democracy apart from the rest of the world, and I want you to think. There are people in the Ukraine dying for the right to have a democracy, to have discussions <coughs> like this. And we have young men and women all over this world stationed to deal with the dangers of a world that doesn't want democracy. So this is important. And America needs to realize it's important. And our citizens do. So there you go. That's my lecture for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Item 28. Comments by city commissioners? Commissioner Graves? I have no comment. Commissioner Clayton? Um, I'll reiterate what uh, <laughs> city manager Einstadt said. 
I was just thinking back to Kansas Day in school, and I would not know that the ornate box turtle <laughs> is, I think, the reptile of Kansas mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. all the cool little pamphlets we did in Kansas Day. So um, I think that's a great thing as well. Um, and to Commissioner Wygand, congratulations, especially for me, on your retirement. <laughs> it served me well. Um, and thank you for the, the compliments on the, the IQ thing. I'm not sure if that's true. So, so we will see. Thank you. Commissioner Kaler. Are you giving out ornate box turtles for yeah. Kansas Day? <laughs> We're all trick or treating at his house on Kansas Day. Just letting you know. Um, uh, Kansas Day, um, thank you, Rita, for the information and thank you for your love and passion for um, our state. It is indeed a great state and I appreciate um, all your words that you shared with us. And so um, I hope that every Kansan takes a moment to appreciate Kansas Day. Um, I do want to bring up that uh, we did do a proclamation on human trafficking and unfortunately um, the individuals that were supposed to be here weren't able to be here, but um, something that nobody really likes to talk about. Nobody, nobody wants to, nobody sits around having lovely conversations about human trafficking. I'm well aware of that. But what I want you to know is that human trafficking is happening in our community. And not saying in our community as in Kansas, I'm saying our community as in Ottawa. And I'm telling you, it is happening. Um, it is a societal problem. And we must all be aware of that societal problem. Um, we must bravely report any concerns that we have to law enforcement um, as an initial support of victims. Those victims cannot and are unable to ask for help. Um, victims of human trafficking need citizens like myself, everybody here, everybody listening to report and make this heinous, heinous crime go away. Again, I know this is not a conversation that anybody likes to have. I recognize that nobody sits around and has a great conversation on Saturday night about human trafficking, but if we're not aware of it and if we do not bring it to the topic um, in our community, it's never going to go away. So it's important to have that conversation. And then on a completely different note, um, Tom Wigand, thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Um, I always appreciated your humor. Um, I'm not sure if you heard um, Commissioner Skidmore say that you were on mute, because I think that was probably one of our favorite things to say <laughs> during your year. But um, you're on mute, Tom. You're on mute. Um, so um, I'm glad that the mic worked well for you tonight. Uh, I do appreciate that you and I have both been in Rotary for years um, and that I appreciate that you brought the four-way test into your comments tonight. And um, every Rotarian knows the four-way test, but I think it's just a good um, framework for the rest of your life and for every single day. So thank you for highlighting those. And I appreciate all that you did while you're on the City Commission and I appreciate all that you continue to do for our community. So thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore? Yeah, Tom, I do appreciate all the things you did for us. Uh, your wisdom and experience were invaluable, and so we will appreciate all the time, all the days we had when you were here. And uh, suddenly when you left, I became the oldest one on here, I think, is uh, I realized very quickly. But anyway, <laughs> it's been an honor to, to have worked with you and served with you, Tom. And yeah, Rita, I think about Kansas Day. Yeah, it used to be a bigger event. When I was in grade school, I remembered drawing a Jayhawk and I didn't do very good marks on it because I colored purple then. I don't know why. But uh, nonetheless, I do remember it was a bigger day than it used to be, and I wish they would bring it back. But And speaking of Jayhawks, I'm, I'm wearing red and blue tonight for a purpose because my KU fans, my KU friends, and the basketball team, I mean, bless their hearts, they sure gave it a good effort, but they just didn't match up uh, last night. And you know, there are three wonders in the world. You may have known this already. Uh, cats always land on their feet. I guess wildcats do too. Uh, sharks never need to floss, and Bill Self uh, needs to be careful when he calls a timeout in, uh, in the future. <laughs> so uh, we'll see where that takes him. And uh, and uh, and I appreciate the discussion up here too. We've had good discussion tonight. I agree, and it's important to keep that going. Thank you. Thank you. Got to move on to item 29. Comments by the mayor. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Skidmore's comments about uh, the discussion. I think it was great discussion. Um, uh, Commissioner Clayton, I, I was I was confused early on too, um, getting you know setting down and especially being appointed because 
you know, there's a lot you learn, I guess, in those first few months, maybe, but we, you jump right into budget season and it's, and it's <laughs> certainly, you know, right in the deep end. So, uh, certainly I think I take that upon us, uh, you know, the, that have been here for longer to, uh, have discussions, you know, uh, certainly need to, uh, relay some of the information, you know, that, that we know that, uh, that maybe, you know, it would be confusing. Um, but. I appreciate the, the, the comments and the, and, the, and the discussion that we had, and certainly all the other discussion that we had today throughout today's agenda. So that'll move us on to our announcements. Uh, January 23rd, we have a study session here at 4 p.m. January 25th, the uh, League of Kansas Municipalities Local Government Day is at 2 p.m. in Topeka. January 30th, we have a study session here at 4 p.m. And February 1st is our regular meeting at 7 p.m. Is there anything else to come before the commission this evening? I will adjourn.